been making music ever since the crack boom. Country rap, country rap tunes. Coming down. Country rap tunes. Gotta have guitars and a lot of bad boys. Come to the south once, I bet you you'll be back soon. Coming down. Country rap, country rap tunes. Coming down. Country rap tunes. You know what I'm saying? For real, man, you got to feel my young partner, Cool Mo. <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up with it, man? It's your boy Corey Mo back off in this thing one more time for the Country Rap Tunes podcast. And I have a super duper special guest in the building. I got my wonderful co host in the building, Miss Kimbo Slice with the dice. You know what I'm dice. talking about? And um, she's finna introduce our special guest, man. We go back like time machines. So, uh, who we got in here today, Kim? Oh, shit. We got the interview I've been motherfucking waiting for in the building today. Oh, he invented a whole genre of music. <laughs> he was everything in the early 2000s. Nigga, I was in the club dress business, casual with a peplum shirt and a skirt and some high heels from Aldo snapping my motherfucking ass off to this man right here. If you follow him on the internet, you know he is talented. He is gifted. He is a musician. He funny. He gonna make you laugh. He gonna make you work out. He gonna make you get lit. You gonna wanna dance yeah, with like him. We got, got none respect, other got than respect. a southern icon oh, in the building. Fable! Oh, hold up, man. Hold up, man. I don't even know what to say behind that right there, boy. Like, that was incredible. No, I'm talking I definitely about. appreciate that. You know, that, that means a lot to me. You mean a lot to the culture. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. So, yeah, man, we're going to jump right into it, bro. Um, I, I was doing some research on you, and uh, it said you have uh, five siblings. You're the oldest? Uh, yeah. So, tell me how it was coming up, man, just just being the oldest, you know what I mean, around the house, man. Man, I'm I'm actually the oldest on every side. Like I'm the I'm the oldest cousin. What? You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You the, you any, the, you the triple OG. Uncles. You know, all my uncles passed away. You know, young. You know, so my mama kind of raised the whole family and stuff. So yeah, man, it's mm. uh, it it was crazy. You know, and then now you know being older than everybody and you know watching them all grow up is like mm. wow. You know, so mm. yeah, it's it's dope, man. It's a dope experience. I had to learn a lot. You know, on the fly myself, not having no father, no uncles in the house. So mm. you know, it's 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 a it's a difficult journey when you're in the hood and you know that's you're right. looking for guidance or whatever. You know, and you got to go get it out the streets. So, I mean, I guess that's how you know yeah. I had to yeah, yeah, I had yeah. to learn it from the streets, and then I came back and gave it to them, and they raw too. That's cold. And like and like when you when you started. You said you didn't start rapping first. You was making beats first. Yeah, I was dropping tracks first. I was, uh, Get out of here, man. What you were cooking up on? <laughs> Bro, like, I'm going to tell you a story. My baby mama and my cousin, they was a rap group, all right? What? Yeah, they was a rap group. And uh, <laughs> it was the dude that stayed across the yard from him. I ain't going to say his name and all of that other thing. But he used to be filming and stuff. So we been trapped every day. We're like, man, what a man always be filming us. And you know what I mean? Mm. Everybody, I'm like, man, I'm looking at it. When he stay right across the yard for me, though. So uh, they start going up there with this dude to the pool palace. I'm like, what y'all going up there palace. every week for whatever tomorrow? We getting in the rap contest. I'm like, ain't finna be watching what? the kids and stuff. I'm going to get in the rap contest. No, that's too. right. <laughs> like, you know, I hadn't even never, you know, really got on stage or nothing like that. But that's how I started, bro. I, I literally, real. I literally, you know, well, I was like, okay, boom. So once I went up there, I won. Like that that week, I won. Like, cause I be singing and stuff. I always had songs and this, that, and mm-hmm. another, but I kind of sung and freestyle. Boom, I came home, bought me. This little uh, what was the Bose, uh, the little small beat machine or whatever, like oh, okay. probably like yeah, that yeah, little yeah, yeah, yeah. thing right there. And uh, I used to be just hammering out tracks, but they still didn't come along. I'm them sitting in D4L studio, and when I start doing beats, like Mook be a do beats and Born to do beats, everybody be in that jam. When I do beats, everybody walk out the studio and, and, and close the door. Like man, Damn. I wish this fool quit beating on the beat machine like this. <laughs> whatever. And then I dropped that Scotty. Yeah. You know, hmm. and I dropped that Scotty, that spaceship song, Bankhead. Then oh, everybody kind of just started hanging around, you know, encouraging me to keep doing beats. Hmm. And I started working with OJ, and uh, we did a lot of songs in the beginning. And Juice all, Man? Yeah, Juice Man. That was Juice like, Man. Man. Juice I Man. love Juice Man. Juice Man, Shout man. Juice Man. Shout out to OJ, man. He was taking yeah. me to the Libra. We were going from the Libra to the Pool Palace, and that sound was just coming out. 
That's hard, man. I love that. You know, your story kind of remind me of MJ's story, MJG, because he uh, had MJG. the exact... Yeah, yeah, MJG got the exact same story. Yeah. Like, people... I mean, obviously, we know MJ is a dope lyricist, yeah, yeah, but people yeah. don't realize he started making beats. And, yeah. like, when they first came to Houston... Him and Ball's spot was the spot where everybody came and wow. like made beats and put stuff together. Yeah. So speaking of groups, says how did D4L come together? Like how did that group form? Wow, well, I don't. Even, <laughs> that's a crazy question because I don't know if we ever came together. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, I just it's, it was never a group. It was like when I came to D4L, it was they was already D4L mm-hmm. like. I, I was already Fabo. Like, I had me and Dro already had a project with Rahe in the Dream. I was on the radio with Pastor Troy and Drama with It's on the Map. And I had to come back to the block because that didn't work out for me. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm back at the pool palace. I'm doing, you know, thing. But I'm still, like, everybody know me. I'm a rapper now. And uh, I used to have to go against these dudes every week. Hmm. Shot a little walk in the club. It's 100. Since I've been in high school. Like, wow. first of all, Charlotte Lowe had a hundred dudes walking with him Straight every up. day. Like, every we had hmm. the skating ring, Charlotte Lowe walking in, there's a hundred dudes with him. <laughs> they D4L. You yeah. see what I'm saying? The click D4L, the D4L. I don't like to take the name from somebody. Somebody named them the group that because we was all locked up. But yeah. I don't like to take the name from the hood because we really not D4L. They D for well. I was like a draft pick. Like I'm in this, I'm in, I'm at the pool pella. I see need food. Like everybody he put on stage. <laughs> um, what's up? You, your mama just woman. Lo was like, man, come down to the studio. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, come, come, yeah. come drop some or whatever. And then I came in, I ain't had nowhere to stay, you know, this, that, and that. I start living at the studio and I start putting in that work. And uh, and we 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 got the bitch can't do it like me. And uh once mm-hmm. we got the bitch can't do it like me, I think I went to John Burr South Day. And I did the dance, and if you had the Access Channel back then, Channel 24 in yep. Atlanta, it just kept running all day long. All day. Yep. So you see me on there with the green <laughs> yeah. on, just Going keep crazy. doing, doing the dance. But I get locked up. You see what I'm saying? And when was I'm in... No, 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 no. This this 2003. Damn, oh, okay. I was in 98. I was in elementary school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, it say you got out of jail. No, nah, I'm just, I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. I did my research on your motherfucking ass. I'm just playing with you. It's like 2003 though. By okay, 2002, okay. 2003, we all go to jail. Me, low, go to jail and stuff or whatever. And uh, while I'm in jail, the whole project start coming together because everybody watching Assets Channel, they want something. And mm. the people on the street, like, man, we got to give them something. So they try and put a little project together. And uh, during that process or whatever, I guess they talked to the labels and stuff, and they was like, well, we like this Laffy Taffy song or uh, whatever, you know, blah, da 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 So when I got out, it was already in motion. So what I did was just, you know, I am just inserted myself and just try to make sure you be a team player and make sure everything go like it's supposed to do. But I ain't know none of these dudes, so it's like a hundred of these dudes. So, mm. yeah, man, it, that that was that was D4L. Like, whoever was on the song, that was who was in D4L because we all got a thousand songs. So whichever one popped off, mm. that was going to... It could have been this dude, that dude, and that dude. We was going to be the group. You feel me in that yeah. situation? So that's that's how it formed. So it was all just solo artists. Everybody's like, you see us now. You see Charlotte Lowe branched out. You see... Everybody doing different stuff. So it was just basically like a collection of people that came together, you know what I mean, for that one moment. And it was a great moment. Hmm, that's real. Yeah. That's real. And like and like how 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 did you meet Shorty Lowe? Was it was it at the palace? I, or I already it? knew everybody. I keep saying the, I remember the everybody pool palace. I keep saying it needs right to be up. a movie. Shorty Lowe is a, a entity. He was an entity <laughs> before before while I was in elementary school, he was an entity. Like, yeah. you know, he used to throw these uh these basketball games, because you got to think, I got homeboys that done got, you know, it's homeboys that done got lost, you know, lost lives on both sides. Mm. It's five different projects. My project beefing with mm. everybody project. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm from Bankhead Courts. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, Perry Holmes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Perry stuntman Holmes. from Hollywood Coat, and Perry Holmes and Hollywood Coat been beefing. So, all this stuff been going on for years, but Low used to throw these, like, little hood basketball games. And when you come to the hood basketball games, you know you went finna cut up at Low. At low uh, basketball event, you feel what I'm saying, and that's how I started. Just I used to hoop and stuff, so I used to get down yeah. there, and uh, he mm. started picking me. <laughs> I was like, I'm on low team. <laughs> you don't never lose when you're on low team. <laughs> like low ain't finna let you lose. Uh, right. Low running the point guard the whole time, and he ain't finna let us lose. And uh, you know that's how I met him, though. I mean, I knew him, but that's how I met him. Like yeah. he started picking me. 
Yeah. You know, that's dope. You want Shot to pick you because if you're playing against him, you ain't going to never win. No, don't gamble, don't bet. Because low. Five. 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 <laughs> Who going to tell him it ain't no five? <laughs> <laughs> the man, four feet five, and he got a one hit a quarter that'll knock you out, boy. Damn. So, yeah, man. That's how I oh. met him. That's cool. Okay, so back up a little bit to yeah. 98. Yeah, yeah, yeah went to jail. Stuck on this nah, I went, I went to, because I want the jail. Nah, nah, story. I went. I went to prison in '97. Okay, but yeah. you came out in '98. And you nah, I, I ain't, ain't seen none of '98 on the street. I came out in '99. '99. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. okay, cash so money was going crazy while I was in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got out in '99 and started busting heads to the white man. Nah, nah. Okay, well tell me what happened when you got out, man. Uh, I mean, when I got out, uh, whatever, I was just like, you know, like every other nigga. I, was, I remember dying my hair blonde and everything trying to look different because I ain't know nothing. Now. And uh, I remember uh, hmm. just uh, when I came home, my hood was towed down. Like I, I had been, and my mama came from Bankhead. She got an apartment in Perry Home. You know how, how I go. She was raised up over there, but when you get your own apartment, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, so we grew up kind of in Perry Home and Bankhead. But uh, when I got out, Perry Home towed down. Like half of the apartment was gone. Like my mama was like one of the last people out there. And so it was just it was, it was what it was, right. you know what I mean? Nigga had to nigga had to get to get it. And uh mm-hmm. I started walking up the street to that pool pallet, man. Straight and up. uh the pool pallet is like a mile up the street. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I started Blessing going and it's guys. a hill. Like if you come down Perry Boulevard, you gotta go up the hill to the mm-hmm. pool palace or uh, whatever. And uh, you know, Perry Home, we got our own laundromat, our own grocery store, our own gas station. Like, you know, people really didn't leave off and down now. I really didn't leave Perry Home until I was probably like thirteen, bro. Wow. Unless I was going to Bankhead or somewhere else, you know, your mama take you downtown on Fourth of July. I hadn't even seen no white people, like, Damn. you know, unless they came and stopped at the store, like we, we ducked off, right? You know, so right. yeah. So and I, I, I came up out of that, started walking to the pool palace and seen what was at the top of that hill, and it been up ever since. Boy, that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> that's cold so when you recorded Laffy Taffy, did you did you have any idea? Like when you was recording, it, did you know it was gonna be such a massive hit because it's still one of the biggest songs and sync licensing and everything so yeah. did you have a vibe because sometimes people be like that record that was that record they they didn't even maybe like the record or something nah I, it's it, man it's crazy yeah. because i had never did a girl song you know in my life that was our like anthem. i was like doing like my girl songs at that time was like, I don't want to talk about it no more. Bitch, mm. I don't want to see your face. Like, I'm, <laughs> and, you know, and my songs was like that. Like, you know, it, it was it was like that was like what I, the type of songs that I was writing for girls. And uh, I came from the script club one night. Uh, K-Rab had left the CD. We had hung out like the night before. And K-Rab went in with my key. I gave him the key. He was like, man, I'm going to the studio. And he went in there. And he dropped two 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 uh, tracks that night. It was "I'm the Man" and uh, "Laughing Taffy." Those were the two two beats that he left on the CD. Crazy. And uh, me and this girl come from Babes or whatever, and we get in there, and it was just a vibe. Like you know, I turned them on. You know, y'all was when you come in the studio, you always looking for something to record. You trying to figure out something to record on or whatever. Whoever did a beat, this that that another. But yeah, he left those two tracks and. Uh, I just remember turning the beat on or whatever, and psh, through the night we I dropped the whole song, and then you write. I, I was going to erase the verse because I ain't never rapped like that, and I haven't rapped since like that. Damn. But it was just it was just a vibe, you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm always trying to push the boundaries, so yeah, you know, I I, I just kind of went off. I wasn't no writing or nothing. I just kind of went in the booth, and I'm looking for Miss Bubblegum, or Mr. <laughs> Freaking, you know. Damn. It was just and it went crazy. And, and like on the on the geeked up song, I didn't yeah. know that that stood for give instead of kill. Yeah, give instead of kill. I never knew I already that. Already, you didn't gain a key. You with it? That's cold, man. Yeah. How? Yeah. How? What's What's the process of of doing that particular record? Like, did, did uh, you do the beat to that one? Yeah, or? yeah. I, uh, one of my homeboys got killed, mm-hmm. and uh, we all was just still up. You know, just it had been one of those nights or whatever. And yeah. uh, by six o'clock in the morning, I I I started hammering out the beat. I was uh, arguing with Moo Beat kind of earlier that day. He took his uh. Hmm. Flappy disc out of the 3000. Okay. And so whatever was loaded sounds, up in there, yeah. you yeah. know, which was the drum, yeah. the little hat, uh, whatever. And so that's why Scotty don't have a clap because I ain't having the sound. So that's why it's got Damn. that doom, doom, doom. And I put that, boom, that's my clap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's why I got that downbeat okay. in there. And then I start coming in on the rap. I'm geeked. Because that's the only other sound I had to separate the verse from it. Boy, that's cold. Yeah. Hard. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. But me and Slick B actually went back in with Mike Karen and we did it over. 
mm. and stuff. And that's when I put the gig up. But it was already hot in the streets. Like, mm. if you went to Club Chocolate, you went to Pool Palace, anyway, everybody knew the song. So when I put the gig up in there, like, nigga, you don't even understand. Mm. Man, I came home with the song. Because, you know, we got the deal now. I got the publishing deal. You know, I'm jury and everything, all this. Boom, boom, boom. And I finally come off the road. And I was like, man, listen to the song now because the album had came out. And uh, I let him hear. Boom. Mm. Man, what you do to the song? My mama didn't even like the song, bro. Like, I thought he redid it. Like, Damn. Like, you got to hear the original verse. It's just, doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Doom, doom, doom. Scotty, beam me up. Uh, I want to fly. Uh, and then I'm going to stop that and start right, saying, I'm on, geeked man. up. Then I put, the, I'm starting to see spaceships on baby. That went in there first. Yeah. That's, that went in there first. So that, that was like the last thing I added. Yeah, oh, no, and uh, it grew on people, man. You know, but everybody already, I had a slow, the song had like a six-year journey, bro. Damn. It started out as, I'm geeked up. I can't make it on my own. I'm trying to do my Eddie Kendrick. I can't get no high notes. <laughs> so it was like the ugliest song. Yeah. And uh, the pills had just came in. I remember that. And so <laughs> everybody used to be kind of hanging out late night. I don't know if y'all remember the 2002, 2003 culture. Like, we... Like, here. you can be over somebody's house till 6 in the morning, morning. bro. Y'all yeah. just playing space. Yeah. Everybody geeked up. Like, you see what I'm saying? And yeah. there wasn't no drama. Like, it was yeah. like a different culture. And uh, and we, I, you just had these little little jukebox, little, little, the CD players, you know, it was about this big. You just slap the top down. You put the CD yeah, in. Yeah. And we used to have that. And I had to, everybody start putting that geeked up on. I can't make it on my own. I wish these haters leave me alone. I'm geeked up. But it was slow, and yeah. I had like doom, 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 because I didn't know how to do beats. It was just like a little ting, ting. And for about two years, we listened to that. And then uh, when my yeah. partner passed away, I went in and dropped the faster version, and and uh, you know Crazy. used the same song because I had been singing it for so long. I kind of knew the hook, and then I freestyled the verses. Cold, I'm geeked up. Man. I can't see because it was real. All the walls keep looking at me. I tell myself <laughs> there's nothing wrong. But I can't stop grinning my teeth. It just, I was in that oh, moment. No, it was, that was the experience I was going through. And uh, yeah, yeah, what a time, man. You know, I'm, how'd you how'd you come up with the with the dance you be doing and uh, all like what 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 possessed <laughs> you to come up with that, man? Man, was it was that early on? Nah, I, I started out doing like my granddaddy dance, and it was more of a <laughs> A little thing like this, and uh, <laughs> you know, as I I get get, get the dancing and stuff all the time or whatever, it kind of turned into the little two step. Mm. And uh, believe it or not, man, the dance was like when it took off from the bitch can't do it like me. Like I said, I was in jail. Like mm. you know, these people been watching the Assets Channel, like boom, 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 seeing the dance. When I got out, it had evolved. Like mm. you had the people in the hood, like you know, yeah. they was they were doing yeah. it. And uh, my homeboy yeah. Zed, no, my bad. <laughs> my homeboy Zed, his son came to the studio one day, and he was in there killing. Boom! And I started <laughs> pointing with it and everything, like boom. Huh. And I was like, okay. And uh, when you see so many people doing it now, I gotta evolve because everybody knows my dance. So I gotta evolve. And uh, bro, I couldn't dance a lick, bro. I, I still, <laughs> still can't dance a lick. <laughs> I grew up in church. I grew up doing the Holy Ghost praise band. Like, so when you see me on stage, it's a little bit. It's a little praise dance. It's a little, it's a little praise dance. dance. It's, a little, it's, a little, it's a little get out. It's a little yeet, yeet. You know, if you look at me, I'm basically doing the get out and the yeet. Like, you know, yeah. but I just don't go side to side and all of that. But if you look at me, it's, yeah. it's still the get out. I'm doing the little ticking. And I just take every bit of dancing that you can do. I throw that leg and I throw up everything over. in there. All of that. You know? Listen, so. I was online. Last night, and I was watching a bunch of kids in Japan yeah. doing uh, the fable. They like doing, they was. I they, got a whole they, squad yeah. over there. I, I, I was in Japan. What well, is just this last time? Uh, just I guess a month ago, somewhere in there. And uh, I, the craziest thing happened. They've been on COVID. They've been locked down, so nobody can get over there. Or whatever, just kind of open back up this year, and uh, well, last year. And uh, just walking down the street, it's like five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. And as I come out the club, it's like, yo, Fable, Fable. Like, we got it on yes, camera. they are crazy about you And it was just like, Japan. they was just like calling me out. And it, it shocked me because, you know, you I've been around Japan so many times, but I'm just not knowing these people growing up with me. Mm. And so DJs and everything, man, like a lot of people was coming out the club like, Fable, Fable. And uh, it was me and Queen. And yeah. Queen was like, he calling and I was like, who? Like, <laughs> it's like Fable, and while I'm talking to him, somebody else come over. Fable, like, I'm mm. like, oh, what's up, man? What's going on? He's like, I, I DJ for you before, like, uh, damn, them <laughs> folks love you, crazy. man. It's yes, crazy. I, I seen a whole feed of just like Fable love in Japan. I was yeah. like, that's so hard. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's like five thousand people come out when I come out there. Like, they, they have to get the big venues. 
what's one of your most memorable moments like on this journey I'm sure you have a bunch of them oh. but what's one that like sticks out I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I don't know man I was, this one fest or whatever I thought that was dope I got a chance to dance in front of you know these people they call me they self you know what mm. I mean and uh when you when you get those moments or whatever because you know a lot of people they see you out here working or whatever, but they like the bigger acts, the bigger groups and stuff like right. that or whatever. But I look at it like this. I watched 20 artists perform one night, and I wanted to walk out except for two of them. I ain't going to call mm. nobody names or nothing. But it was just boring. It's like, stage it's like celebrity karaoke. It's like <laughs> nobody ain't really singing their words. The music ain't playing by itself. They, they song is playing. So we just literally at a karaoke bar drinking you know, what we yeah. can't really drink at the concert. So you're right. just kind of standing there and everybody just, when they song come on, they sing it all. Mm -hmm. It's like he's singing it with you. It's like he's celebrity karaoke. Wow. When I get up there, I tell promoters like, okay, since you're going to book him, him, and him. And now when they book me, they find out. You mm -hmm. know, I'm the entertainment. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like if I come to your show and I pay $40 for a ticket, at some point in time, you're going to have to wow me. You right. feel what I'm saying? Like at some clubs in Miami, you go to the club and you be sitting there drinking. Somebody comes swinging out the sky. It's mm. somebody got blowing torches and smoke. Mm. I'm like, damn, mm. I don't see that in Atlanta. Like, <laughs> then people walk around giving you massages and stuff. Like, I'm like, what the hell going? <laughs> you gonna give me a massage? Yeah, I'm like, damn, in the club. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, you know, you want you. I, I like to be more than just the the, the celebrity karaoke. Yeah. You know, that. I figured we can we can sing the song in the radio in the car. I ain't gonna spend forty dollars to come right here and you just stand. This is a fireworks. Pow! Let somebody do a backup flip. Where's yeah. Snoop Dogg car? What the hell? <laughs> like so, sometimes it just be like that. So yeah, I like to tell promoters, man, when you put me on the show, I'm coming to be the entertainment, and then we viral. Yeah. So I would I would say the the Winter Fest, the Winter Fest, the last Winter oh. Fest or whatever, because I got a chance to dance a little bit. They was yeah. like, you know, gave me a set, and uh, I turned the bitch can't do it like me on it. It went viral. Killed them. So like, so like, as far as these days on Instagram, I see you be going retarded. Boy, stop! Keep doing that, Cor. I love watching your shit, bro. I love that shit. I be, I be, I be sending you shit sometimes. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, his own stuff. I love it, dog. I yeah, love yeah. it. So people be sending me videos, man. Yeah, man. I be like, viral. man, send, send, send me a video. I, I was like, Warren Sapp, man. So many people be sending me videos, and I seen Warren Sapp the other day. Like, yo, shit. check yes. this out. I'm like, man, I don't Warren Sapp. Send me a video. Like, nigga, I love you. Oh, oh see him shaking. <laughs> he spoke to me. <laughs> So what? So what made you want to just take them videos, remix it, and just go retarded on their ass? Cause, cause really you didn't took over. That's like how how did how did you get into that? Uh, man, I was uh, watching DC Young Fly, bro. Like mm. when uh, when that he when DC Young Fly left or uh, whatever, I was just missing them videos and stuff. And then I started doing my game show. And uh, I remember I had this guy kind of run out the house, and I was like, if the house on the right is uh, on your right, the third house on your right is is a white color house, I'll give you $100 right now or something. And then he come out the house, and he running. Mind you being on quarantine now. And everybody on the street kind of running now with the phone, and we all counting the houses like one, two, three. And it was a brick house. Or uh, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, boy, stop. You ain't doing that. <laughs> you know, and hung up the line. Get off my line. Boom. And, uh, you know, I was doing the game show like that. And when I said it, I was like, okay. And start because I was doing the come here. Come over here. Like, I was trying to figure it out. Or yeah. whatever. My mama called me and she was like, who is that? I was like, who? That person online, I was like, I don't know. I just turned the camera on and came out one day. Like, I don't know who you think you will, <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you. I call it Auntie Uncle. <laughs> that sounds like an auntie and an auntie <laughs> uncle. Boy, put that, put that down. Sit that down. Put that back right there. Nah. Get out of there. <laughs> Get off from there. Get away from there, you little helpful. <laughs> All this shit going viral. I know. What's up with it, man? It's your boy Corey Mo. I need everybody to go and download the mobile app, Country Rap Tunes Radio, 24 7 non stop Southern Hip Hop. All your favorite throwbacks. It's available on Android and it's available on iPhone. Also, I need you to log on to countryraptoons.com, support a player. If y'all looking for that fly merch, you already know what it is. Also, you can get all your exclusive Country Rap Tunes podcasts there. Everything involving Country Rap Tunes 
You know where to go. You know what to do. Holla at your boy. Chech. Cut the rap tone. The rap tone. The rap tone. So a lot of people in music are now starting to trans, you know, transfer over into TV and film yeah. and and yeah. doing that kind of like content creation, yeah. all of that stuff. Which, like you said, when you come, you to entertainment. So you to entertainment, no matter what genre yeah. you playing it. Is that yeah. something you about to get deeper in? Is the movies and stuff? Oh, I'm, well, basically, I just uh, won the Las Vegas Film Festival uh, with uh, for best duo. With a uh, shout out to Lil Proctor, she's six years old. We did the uh, short film B. And uh, we won Best Duo in a short film. And so, yeah, man, I, I've been acting for a while. I'm in the finesse, too, with uh, Zaytoven. I'm, nice. I'm the director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the director in there. Like, yeah, man, I've been, I've been acting for a while. And, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I guess that's 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 basically the next step for everybody. You want to do as much as you can, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I mean, we all walked around acting every day anyway. We don't really want to be these people. <laughs> I want to be I want to be Joan of Arc. No, <laughs> no, but that's what I keep saying. I think the Pool Palace is a TV show. Yeah, I think yeah, somebody yeah. needs to yeah. make, because yeah, I don't want to have Pool Palace. Uh, it's I like 60 projects in the making. And is it? Man, I, well, I actually got a, a project I'm working on right now, too. It won't be called the Pool Palace mm -hmm. or whatever. But I, I, you, you're absolutely right. I think the Pool Palace era was like, if you ask me, I didn't think an era came before that crunk snap era. Mm -hmm. It was a Frankie Beverly Mays them era, the Gap Band and all of that. Mm -hmm. If you just gotta skip all of that and then get to the crunk snap. If I'm saying I'm coming to see a concert and I wanna put an entourage of people together, can you do that? Mm -hmm. Can what era can you put together like that? You gotta go all the way back to Motown. Exactly. Or you gotta come mm -hmm. to like that eighties era right there with the gap band and all, and you can throw all them in the Earth Wind and Fire Gap Band, all of them, boo boo. And then in between you got your fitness cents, you got your cash money, you got your no limits, you got your other things, but it's like they all that one click, like yeah. this, that, another. And then you get to La John and them, and La John joined in with the snap era too, with the snap your fingers, like he he Do kept it going. Yeah. And so I would just say that era was one of the most important eras in music because it mm, not only sure. it not only changed music, it, people don't even realize what we did for music. Before I came into the game, you had to make a whole album. You had to make that jail song. You had to make the mama song. You had to make all of them songs. Just go listen to a DMX album or something. He had every layer in that album that you wanted to have. And uh, when we came along, it was like, wow, listen to my new ringtone. Mm -hmm. And so now everybody trying to get a ringtone song. Like you trying to get that one song for yeah. your ringtone. Yeah. And so, because I nobody had no ringtone. I remember BET came to us and had us do Pound BET. That was like the first thing they was rolling out for the ringtones. But if you woke up in the morning, anytime, get your chance to ringtone, girl, shake that left and tap. That was on TV for like Dang. a year straight, yeah. you know, with them promoting the ringtones and stuff. So we literally changed it from making a whole album to making just one song. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Before Before the Snap era, there was nobody making just one song. No label went, was a, was about to come to you and say, oh, your song's hot. What you, you, I, I should be giving you a deal. No, the label back then, they going to snatch it. Because we were some of them artists that they snatched up, put in the studio, put the whole project together, this, that, that, and other. We worked with A&Rs. We did that. Now you could be sitting at home in your bedroom, and you could do the song, and if it's hot, it hit TikTok, boom, the label come oh, yeah. in. No, I read something last night that said that Laffy Taffy was the like the benchmark, the first real digital hit. Yeah, it, it, we uh we in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. The, for the most streams and something or whatever. But yeah, oh shit, That's yeah. Hard. iconic. That was dope. That's hard. Yeah, That's I be looking at that bad. little passage like man. That was big back then. Now people getting a million hits in a day. <laughs> man. <laughs> Which I was no foundational to that. To yeah, that man. Whole it was movie. dope, man. I watched I watched a lot of artists come behind us or whatever with the one song and you know, and I'll be like, wow. And I don't think that artist could have made a whole song, a whole album. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then just like in my mind that I'm thinking, they just go away after that one song. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it created a lot of one hit wonders. <laughs> <laughs> Man, give, me but, your, give me your 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 top three artists. So I could just, you know what I mean, to see where you where you get your inspiration from. Are you talking about my top three artists ever? Yeah. yeah. Oh they ain't rappers. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like Jackie Wilson. Okay. I like, uh, okay, I don't know, man. As you know, Michael, you know, Mike is the number one inspiration. 
or whatever, and I would just say James Brown. Like, there you go. So you like the entertainment. That, this make, yeah. that makes sense, makes right? Sense. All yeah. three of them yeah. high high level yeah. entertainment. Yeah, I mean, you want to be the best, but nowadays it's like I, I just, that's just when I was growing up. That right. was the standard. Right. You know, my uncle played the guitar. My other uncle played the drums. Oh, okay. Everybody in church, I play the drums, I play the guitar, I play the piano. Like, I learned all of that in church. Mm. Like, you see what I'm saying? So, it's like everybody I knew play an instrument. And now, nobody don't know how to do nothing. <laughs> like, man. It's like... Hitting computer keys. Man, even beats, with the computer bro. keys, they, they kind of just putting it, placing it yeah. in, in the spot. It's like, it's, there's no effort into that. You feel what I'm saying? But, I mean, I these guys lying. are great with what they're coming up with. But I'm just saying, far as... Having to read music and learn right. how to play it and, right. you know, <laughs> this, that, that, and other. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I feel that. So so just 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 on a lighter note, just what, what's your favorite cereal growing up that you used to always eat? You know, <laughs> Frosting Flakes. All day, Frosting Flakes. <laughs> <laughs> but did you put more sugar on top of the Frosting Flakes or <laughs> you let it rock? Nah, I put more sugar on it something. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, when you're from the hood, you got to make your own Frosting Flakes. <laughs> See, I used to go out there to the EOA to the center and get the box or whatever. Uh, see, in the box, you're going to get the cornflake, the big old yeah. thing of cornflakes. And then, you know, you got the big cheese and all of that. Yeah, and I take the, the box big. home. And then you make the biggest bowl that you can and you get the you get water. Because <laughs> they don't come with no milk. You, know, you don't want to eat that powder milk with your cereal. They just yeah. they never work out right. <laughs> uh, so you take the water and then you put the sugar in there. And then you... Till it's gray. That, that's how you ate the cornflake. <laughs> You could eat the cornflake with the powder. Anybody who ever got the powder milk or uh, whatever in the no, box, that's not for serious. anybody in the hood no, will tell you the powder milk not. just sit up under the counter. You think when you go in there, it's some yeah. Ajax or something. <laughs> but nobody don't never do, use the powder milk. They ain't never, they ain't never drank the powder milk. Never that. Never that. Never that. If you drank the powder milk, you was you you were desperate. <laughs> you were desperate. Like your stomach were hurting bad, boy. I don't care who house you go in in the hood. You look up under the sink. It's it right there by the AJ. Everybody leave the power. Right by the AJ. <laughs> right by the AJ. AJ. You know in the hood you ain't got but two cleaning. Th- Straight th- up. <laughs> it's AJ and, and Pine. No, AJ and Pine saw. Yeah. They clean everything. Yeah. And if it when that that don't work, my grandma may never get the vinegar, baby. Just wipe it down. It's <laughs> a bleach. Vinegar. Just vinegar everything. My mama used to get that Ajax and just throw it yeah, all over the tub. Like she come in and clean the damn tub. Oh man. Like what the hell? You gotta let that. You gotta let that sit. You gotta let it sit after your brother get out of there. Man, nigga, my brother get out of there. You gotta let it sit. I hate that. My shit, brother used man. to leave that ring around there, boy. <laughs> Tell me. You know what? What's um? I I heard Drake shout you out on a couple of songs. What, was it was it one song he shouted you out on? Oh uh, yeah. What's the what's the what's the name of the song? I don't know. Billboard said my name in nine thousand songs. What? That's crazy. Are you kidding me? Yep, nine thousand. Snapping something. like they fable. Yo, <laughs> man. Said they said I'm one of six artists to have a number one hit and uh, and be named in another one, and I'm one of one to have a number one hit and be named in three more. Damn. Wow. Like I don't even know these people, bro, but I I definitely appreciate it. You know what I mean? Cause it been some days, you know, when you when you I'm sitting in Japan somewhere and looking at my little rice garden and don't want to come home. Man, and uh, you hear Thug go, I feel like Fabo. I was like, oh, oh, I'm getting love. on the plane. Oh, love. <laughs> I'm back home now. <laughs> getting on the plane. I wonder if we sample. I'm stoner too. <laughs> what if what if what if we sample that Drake line? You think he'll let us use? Well, snap it like your Fabo. Yeah. yeah, I'm Drake. Drake, pretty cool, man. You know, man, I'm, let's sample that shit and make it's, something. It's fly. a dope song. It's a dope. You need song. to clear that shit. Clear that shit, Drake. Clear, it, Drake. It, clear. Shut up. Y'all hook us up, man. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, what's your what's your favorite country rap tune? Uh, uh, you know, uh, that. Oh, I mean, I don't know, man. Shoot, your favorite UGK uh, record, uh, your favorite uh, record, uh, your favorite uh, record. Uh, 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 some, uh, oh man, yeah. Hook, hook yeah, me up, I man. Some real live pimping, I man. need this country rap tune right here. Are you man. a large or medium, man? Man, you know large. I'm a large, man. I yeah, just yeah, look man. like this on go, camera. Man. Man. I'm, pimping for you, man. I'm a big old dude, man. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a little pimping for you, man. You man, get your yeah, country man. rap tune on. You know what I'm yeah, talking man, about? I gotta, I gotta get my country rap yeah, tune on. Yeah, man, you gotta do it. You 
gotta love that. Yeah, yeah. You, know how, you know how I like black too, cause I'm a sweater. You know. <laughs> no, I don't you know. I got it. It don't man up. I go play a little man. be just got out the shower or whatever. I'm a sweater, sweater. like bro. I go somewhere. You can't. I put a sky blue shirt. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Oh. It's over with. Man, if I want to wear a light shirt, I got to wear it right before I walk in the door. Can't put on no coat or nothing with it. It's freezing outside. You like, why he ain't got no coat? <laughs> don't, don't worry about me. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I'm good. Like, I'm for real, brother. Man, man, you got some shirt that you want to wear you can't wear. Hmm. Bro, you, oh, you a sweater too. Man, make me mad, bro. I go, I, but look, when I'm out with the kids and the family, Look away. <laughs> <laughs> Shit be this big up under my arm. Big as hell. Like, I'm clean, bitch. Look away. Like, you can't help it. I don't know why. You know, I be nervous and shit. You know what I mean? It's you get in there with all the kids and the, <laughs> I want to go smoke a cigarette. I can't. can't I start it. swimming. <laughs> you got to be more careful. <laughs> Gots to be more careful, man. Pray for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I I ain't, and the funny part about it, I'm dead serious, too. All y'all niggas that don't sweat. I was around a nigga that was on stage for 20 minutes. It didn't sweat? He come on stage, he ain't even sweating. Right. Now. I'm like, you had no water in your life. <laughs> ever. <laughs> like, man, this man ain't never drunk water in his life. Like, man, I get out. I stayed up there for two minutes like somebody poured a bucket of water on me. I ain't playing. You be getting it in, man. Boy, I had to, I had to, I had, boy, I had to goddamn wind down. I be trying to go to the moon. Somebody. <laughs> well, before you go, I just want to say you also known for giving back, for mm. caring about where you yeah. come from. Facts. So if you could just tell the world a little bit about that and like let them know anything you got upcoming, anything they should be looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, right now we're working on a project trying to get Corey Mo give me oh, give me two, Corey three more. Oh, we got man. a couple I'm done already. Oh, you yeah, know they're gonna definitely be on there. <laughs> and uh, you know, I got the wine that I'm doing right now, uh Geeked Up Moscato by La Trubita. And uh, so you know, that's in the stores and stuff, probably everywhere, you know. And uh I'm sitting right next to Snoop, you know, just go look. Look. There you go. And everything. And uh I mean, yeah, man, that, that's that's definitely, you know, the movement right now. And uh we got the P U B, which is people up under the bridge where we just, you know, try to make sure people got tents and food and oh, stuff like dope. that, that's you dope. know, because you, you see a lot of people up under the bridges and stuff where mm -hmm. we stay at or whatever. So sometimes we you know, we just go by and drop off tents and stuff. We don't, I don't turn the camera on or nothing like oh, that man. because Come I figure you're gonna do I wanna something. get in on that. Man. No, you me know. too, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I like For that. Sure. So that's dope. That's hard, that's hard. Corey, you know I'm so happy. <laughs> I know, right? You know how I feel about people. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this she she been she been talking about uh kicking it with you for yeah. a couple of weeks. I can't wait yeah. till we get paid. By. I can't I'm wait. literally for my birthday this year. I'm happy. You know, for my birthday, yeah. I'm doing a early 2000s business casual don't birthday don't, party. Don't, 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 Cause y'all don't, don't, don't know, we used to be down there in Buckhead don't, don't, on the strip, dressed like we was ready for a job in the <laughs> at the club. <laughs> And people still do that. Be down there. <laughs> you can catch the Mexicans standing out there now. <laughs> Nigga, they, they, don't, they don't even, they don't just do drywall and stuff no more. <laughs> they come over there hooking up studio equipment. They get the mic straight. Everything, Everything now, boy. Everything. <laughs> you got to get it, man. Boy, you're like, what you do, man? Oh, man, I file, I file papers. I do everything. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah pick up. me up for whatever. Straight up. <laughs> well, man, we, we we know you're busy, man. We ain't going to hold you up, bro. I appreciate you coming out hey, to man, the I show. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. You know, it's always a pleasure hanging out with the Much, legend. Much love, man. I appreciate <laughs> you, Doc. Oh, wait, you know what? We ain't even yeah. talk about you got a Grammy, too, for oh. Killer Mike. Man. Hey. Hold on. Hey. Something for hey. junkies, man. That's you one of my favorite songs, Press man. the button, press the button, press the button. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Oh, love, man. Yeah, so, so, hold on. Before you go, tell us how did the song come about. Wow. We kill a mic and we at this thing. Wow. Uh, uh, we. I think New Face called me to shout out to New Face. Shout new Face new was face. there. Uh, new Face called me new over face. there to do something with uh, Trans Lee and Four Eyes. I okay. think, uh, you know, they had the track going. I think Burn One was in there. And stuff, and uh, uh, I think John Will the Flautist. There's a lot of stuff came out of that session because I actually mm. ended up doing a song with John Will the Flautist too. The, okay, you got to play the flute, the oboe, all that stuff right mm. there. Yeah. So uh, we got a hard song too called Running Red Lights. But mm. uh, I, I think Killer just walked in the session 
or whatever, and kind of heard the verse and stuff that I was putting on that song. No shit. And stuff. And he's like, oh, I ain't even know you still, you know, doing it. I was like, yeah, man, rapping and still rapping. And stuff, huh. like all that. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, they called me back to another session that he was in there, Stanko, and you having himself. And uh, <clears throat> he played a couple of records, then he played that one. And uh, yeah, we, we put it together. Bro, that is one of my favorite songs on yeah, that album, yeah. bro. It's dope. It's I, dope. I, I love listening to that record, dog. All the way to the end, to the very yeah. last, you can't hear nothing else. <laughs> that song is immaculate, bro. I, I can hear Killer right now. Go back in there. I'm like, <laughs> what you mean go back in there? That little one part you just did, that, ah, go back, go back in there. I went back in there, got on the mic, he told me, now go off. Now go off like you at yeah. church. Go off like you go. You know how you get yeah. to talking and stuff. Go off like you. Yeah. Like I was like, man, I'm all hyped up and stuff. You put the battery in my back. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm junk ass. I'm for the junk ass. I'm all not just going. Boy, crazy. that's the best part. Went bro. all the way to church on him, boy. He was like, now go to church. Oh yeah, that's my. Oh. <laughs> I was like, man. I came out of there. I was like, I didn't even know I could hit them notes. You know. I know you were sweating when you yeah. got out the booth. Yeah. I mean, but, but that's what that's what you when you in there when you in there with, with, with greatness or whatever, you know, they're gonna push you because, you know, yeah. he 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 grabbing material. So yeah. he know what he wanted from the beginning though. I mean and just sitting there listening to him, you know, talk about the project before it even came out. Yeah. And playing a couple of songs that he had played for me. I was like, wow, this is gonna be crazy. And that was like See, that was like a year yeah. ago. Like that yeah. was like a year ago. So that's how long he had been working on it. Yeah, man, that boy, real visionary, yeah. man. Shout out to Killer. Shout Mike. out to Killer Mike for and real. that Michael Abner. If y'all ain't got it, go copy it right now. So yeah, man, gonna hold you up. I appreciate you coming out. Oh, once again, my partner, Fabo, man, two dollars. Best day ever. <laughs> <laughs> two dollars, man. Good stuff, man. I appreciate you guys. Touch rap tunes. Oh, Tabalaka. Ah! We've been making music ever since the crack boom. Country rap, country rap tunes. Coming down. Country rap tunes. Gotta have guitars and a lot of bad boys. Come to the South once, I bet you you'll be back soon. Coming down. Country rap, country rap tunes. Coming down. Country rap tunes. You know what I'm saying? For real, man, you got to feel my young partner, Cormo. Partner, Cormo. Partner, Cormo.